Hey, what's poppin'? It's Mellow back at you with another video, and today we're gonna get straight to it. You know, this is a mixing video, it's gonna be a very long video, so you know, strap yourself in, get ready, get your notepad, all that stuff. And I'm gonna show you how to mix a track. We're gonna get into it right now. Before we continue, before we get to the sauce, please put a like on the video. It helps your boy out. Much appreciated. Let's get to it. So we're in phase one, get in the mix to sound how you want it to sound, or at least the song how you want it to sound. So part one of that is sound selection. And this is one key understanding that I need you to have. You can't save bad sounds through the mix. Don't try it. I have a video on sound selection, so you could check that out. So the tip I have is to one, use the best quality sounds that you can before you start to do any RC20 or crazy stuff to it. And two, you know, make sure the drums are good samples as far as good samples that you pick. Now, all the drums that I'm using in this beat are from my combustion kit, but let's listen to the beat very quickly. To illustrate the sound example, I want the 808 to hit much harder. So instead of doctoring it up, I'm gonna go and pick a better 808. That's a prototype 808 that I'm working on, a part of my Combustion Volume 2 drum pack. I can't give you an estimated time when it's coming out, but let's listen to just this part right here and then when the beat drops out. It's a lot harder than the last 808. So now as far as phase one, we go to part two of phase one, and that's the volume levels as far as the sounds. Any DAW you have, you can map out all the sounds on different mixer channels. But being that we're working in FL, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now if you don't know how to do that. If you left click one of the channels right here where I just did, and you drag it down, however many sounds you have, and then you go to the mixer, which you can go to the mixer by clicking this icon right here. You go to the first track, right click the track and then go to channel routing. You wanna click route selected channel starting from this track and it'll map them all out on the mixer. If you wanna do an individual sound, you just select the individual sound right here. You go to whatever mixer channel you want it on. You click channel routing and then click route selected channel to this track. If you want to do multiple, you can select multiple and put them on the same exact track by clicking route selected channels to this track. Boom. If you didn't know how to do that, now you know how to do that. After it's laid out, this is the thing. You know how you want it to sound. You know the qualities of what you're trying to achieve. You might want the drums to hit a little bit softer, but at the same time, there's going to have to be some separation between the melody and the drums, however you want to put it. So with that being said, that's the main thing that we're going to focus on here is separation. I have the part highlighted of the beat where most of the action is going on with most of the sounds. You know, when we listen to that, let's look at what's going on. The kick is hitting at positive three decibels. The 808 is hitting at negative three. All the melodic sounds are hitting somewhere around negative 12, negative 9, negative 15, somewhere in that ballpark. Some people will be doing this. You'll have the beat and you'll wonder why the 808 or something isn't hitting. Let me just crank all these up. Look at the melody right here. It's peaking at positive 3 right where the kick was peaking. Everything sounds like it's drowning because it's all on the same level. Everything is turned up too much. There's no room. So at this phase, you don't want to get to dragging mixer channels or anything like that. What I recommend is controlling everything through the volume knobs over here 
or in whatever DAW you have, just going through the volume knobs. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna turn these down. So that gives me the separation for my kick to come through clear. Now I also want to make something clear as far as the mixer channel levels. You know, you see my kick is the only thing clipping. And one rule that you hear a lot of people say as far as mixing, you don't want anything to clip. That's cool. At a later point, once we start doing the mixer channels and everything and dragging everything down, that will be true. But right now we're getting everything to where we want it to sound. We're getting the sound that we want. So with that, look at my mix. It's peeking through the roof. The mix is peeking through the roof. I don't care right now because right now we're just trying to get the sound that I want. And as far as the mixer channel with the kick on it, you know, they say, oh, yeah, it'll still have distortion and stuff like that. I want to tell you something real quick. A few Travis Scott albums have distortion all over it. You know, distortion is real big in hip hop right now. Sounds good. It is what it is. So I'm not going to be bothered personally by any distortion. And guess who else is not going to be bothered by distortion? Rappers. Guess who else is not going to be bothered by distortion? Listeners. So it is what it is when it comes to that. Again, right now, I don't really care what the master looks like. I just care what everything sounds like. That's just where I'm at with it right now. I recommend that you get monitor speakers. I'm not going to go in depth about that because I could do a whole nother video on my journey as far as mixing through crappy Radio Shack gateway speakers all the way up to me getting monitor speakers. And I have monitor headphones on now, but honestly, it's not ideal to me. I feel like speakers give you more clarity on how everything sounds. So I recommend getting some monitor speakers. Now we're still in phase one. And part three is EQing and individual effects. So we already have everything laid out on a mixer channel and stuff like that. I'm not going to fake the funk right here. I've tried to record this tutorial two times before this. This is the third time. So... I'm not about to go and act like I'm fake mixing anything over again. I'm going to show you what I already did and I'm going to break some things down. So let's talk about individual effects very quickly. Now, as far as certain sounds, I spiced them up with different effects as far as plugins and things like that to give them a different sound. So let's isolate some of them and listen to them, how they sound with and without the effects. This is the first set of leads. That's how they sound with the effects. And just to show you what's going on, that's all that's going on. And I want to look at this one mainly for the melody. Let's listen to it without any effects. It's a high quality synth, but it could be spiced up. So I use the effect rack. You see everything that's going on. We won't get in depth. And I put a delay on it. So let's listen to it without and then with. It's kind of flat before I put the tremolo or the trim, whatever that is, the tremulator, the, the time for the tremulator, time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. It's time for, yeah. It spiced the sound up just to keep it simple. So. You might want to do that with some of the melodic sounds. You may want to do some stuff with the kicks and 808s. I have a whole tutorial on 808s. And I have a whole tutorial on how to make your drums hit harder. And it mainly focuses on kicks. So you'll want to check both of those out. That's why I did a bunch of these tutorials. Because before I got to the mixing tutorial, I wanted to show you how to manipulate individual sounds. So with that being said, we've done that. Now let's talk about these sounds right here as far as the melody is concerned. Now a lot of this, including the melody, exists within the lower to mid frequency. So things are kind of 
you know, hitting each other, clashing and stuff like that. And I don't want to boost the melody up an octave because I tried that. It takes away from the feel. So what I want to do outside of leveling things like I've already done, I want to clear up some space with the EQ. As you see on this sound, I took away some of the highs. We're going to listen to it without. Now with it. So this is really meant to serve as the lower end of the chords. So that's how come I dim some of the highs. Now this sound right here. It has a higher timbre. So what I wanted to do with this is cut some of the lows off. So let's listen to that. I put a high shelf on it. If you don't know how to do that, you pretty much just cycle through these until you get to this and then you can drag the one back and forth. So let's listen to it. Thinned it out a lot. Let's go to the next sound. So that's the bass, of course. You know, I took some of the highs off of it. Let's listen to it. That left more room for the mids and the highs. Now, let's listen to the melody real quick. Because that's supposed to resonate in the higher frequencies, I push the higher frequencies up. So now to demonstrate what I just did, let's play everything with and without the EQ. We're gonna go without first. And you see I clicked all those on. Everything has more space. So everything works together better. And also one thing I forgot to add was this right here, which is a choir and I did another high pass filter on that and I turned it down very low. But let's listen to it without. Brilliant. So I created room for the other instruments to pretty much shine in certain spaces. I left enough room in the bass area for the 808 and the other bass to shine through, you know, at different times. I let the frequencies that were supposed to sit in the mid sit in the mid and I dimmed them on the highs and on the instruments that were supposed to highlight in the high frequencies, I put high pass filters on them to take away some of the lows so that everything in the mid low and the low frequencies could shine with that. That's EQing and individual effects. Let's listen to a little bit of what we have so far. So now that we've gotten done with phase one, now we move on to phase two, which is leveling the mixer tracks. Now, remember I said we got all of this stuff clipping as far as the beat. It's clipping outrageous. It's going through the roof. It's, uh, it's in outer space right now. This is where we get to the point where we want to stop the clipping, but also level the mixer tracks. Now, now this is a universal principle when it comes to mixing. You're going to hear most people say this. You want headroom. And the reason that you want headroom is because when it comes time to make adjustments later, you want to have some wiggle room in case you want to edit any sounds or push something up. Drums take up the lower frequencies and the mid frequencies and they hit the hardest. So those are going to be the things that spike your mix the most. Now, when it comes to that, the low end does that way more than the high end. So what is the lowest instrument? The kick? and the bass. Those are going to be the first two things that we start. I'm going to solo these tracks by themselves. It's the kick in the 808. You do that by right clicking on one of these dots that'll solo it. If you have a different DAW, good luck finding that out. What I'm going to do is hold control and shift and select both of these and I'm going to bring them down. This is going to be the foundation of where my headroom is. So I'm just going to pull it down. I'm going to go to the master. Right now it's peaking at negative three. I want it lower than that. 
And the reason I'm doing these both at the same time is because I was satisfied. I was sa he needs some milk. I was satisfied with how everything sounded when I was doing the beat originally. I don't really want to take away from that too much because that's where the magic is. How everything sounded when it was cramming through the speakers and I was loving everything. So I got it at negative nine. Being that we're going to be mixing so low, what you should do is turn your speakers up so that you can hear everything loud still. I might push the kick up a little bit. I might pull the 808 back a bit. Whatever. I I'm not really messing with it because again, I like where it was at already. So the next thing we're going to do is bring in a snare. Very loud. So we're going to take it down. I don't really want to adjust the sounds with my eyes so much. I want to do it more with my ears. So I'm going to fade it in, listen to it, see where it sounds right. I think that's hitting hard enough. So from there, we're gonna bring in the hi-hats. And we're doing all drums first. I have this crash right here. I'm just gonna drag that down. That sounds good, very subtle. So as far as the drums, they sound good. So now, before I even get to all the melodic stuff, I do have some other instruments. You see all these other patterns over here. They're in different places. So I'm just gonna go to where those are and adjust those. All right, so I got all the extra stuff as far as the FX adjusted. Now I'm gonna bring in the melody. So let's go back to home base where the most drums are hitting and the most melodic sounds are hitting. Let's bring them in. This is the foundational instrument. So I'm gonna bring this in first. I think that's sitting in a good place. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I said not to mix with your eyes, but when it comes to the bass, I have the 808 hitting right after that. Let's listen to that real quick. I wanna make sure the bass is a little bit lower than the 808, so there can be a distinct difference between that and the 808. So the 808 is hitting at negative 18. I'm gonna make sure this is like negative 22 or something like that. All right, so that's good. So as far as the levels, you see me, I went through everything. Let's listen to everything and look at the master channel. That completes Phase two, it's not clipping. I have a lot of headroom and I'm satisfied with where everything is at in the mix. So now we are in phase three of mixing and mastering your track and that is the master channel. Any mixing tutorial you watch, 99.999% of them is gonna incorporate one of these things for sure, maybe two of these things. The first is a limiter. The other one under that, some type of compressor or multi-band compressor. So with that, the first thing that we're gonna go into is compression. Now compression is not a necessary step, it's optional. You don't have to do it. And the one thing that you don't wanna do is over compress the mix anyway. So I'm gonna show you a few plugins you can use and a few presets you can use. So let's get to that very quickly. 
So for Fruity Loops, you can use the Fruity Multiband Compressor. That is the first compressor I'm gonna show you that you can use. They have a couple mastering presets. Mastering 6 dB, mastering 2.4 dB. We're gonna to go to 6 dB because remember mine is peaking at nine. Let's listen to it. I can push the gain right here. Let's listen to it without. So that's one way to go about it. The second one that you could use is Maximus. Now, I've used Maximus for a long, long time, but I may do a tutorial in the future on how to use Maximus by itself. Maximus, again, you could use some mastering presets. They have a couple. They have Clear Mastering, Clear Master RMS, and you can experiment with some of these other ones, but you don't want anything that is too crazy. So let's listen to Clear Master. Out. And you can push the post and the one thing again you don't want to go over zero db at this point you don't want to go over zero db right now what i use is the fruity soft clipper for the compression now we're not going to go in depth with this you can just play with it play with the post and the threshold to see what you like and i just recommend not having it too crazily compressed or anything like that let me throw another quick tidbit in there one thing that i was taught as a youngin was to click that preset right there on a parametric EQ. It cuts out some frequencies that nobody hears for no reason. It's some cute stuff that I was taught a long time ago, so it's in my master preset. I always do it. Let's talk about limiters. We're gonna go with the fruity limiter first. You can just move all these envelopes down, and what you wanna do is rise the gain, but you just don't want it to sound too compressed. You want it to sound louder, just not too compressed. Right now, what I use personally is a T-Rex soft clipper, and it's not necessarily a limiter, it's a clipper, but at the same time, it has limited capabilities. I mean, if I put it at zero dB, it's gonna stay at zero dB, and I could just push the gain. And that's all you're really getting out of a limiter in most cases anyway. A bunch of different people have limiters. You could get one through waves, you could get one through fab filter, you could get one through isotope ozone, but this is the limiter that I use right now. Let's listen to it very quickly. I think that's a good level. So that's basically it, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra game. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of extra sauce on the motherfucking pizza. So you remember I said to have headroom, right? One of the ways that I make my kicks hit harder is by EQing the kick after the mix is done and maybe even raising the kick level. I'm gonna raise it somewhere between 60 and 80 hertz. I'm gonna choke this a little bit, but let's do it. Now the one thing I wanna see is where it's hitting. hitting that negative three. I wanna take this down so that it's not clipping. I 
I'm going to keep it 1,000 with you. I really wish I could give you a fake. Whoa, yeah, you hear that? That's your head. I wish I could do that, but I'm not going to fake you out, dog. I'm not going to fake you out. Not on this channel. We not faking you out. I listened to it through the speakers. The kick is hitting exactly how I want it to hit, dog. It's bussing. It's bussing. That's the main thing in my beats that I be trying to achieve. I want the kick to bust through the speakers like karate, like gangbusters. When you get to this point, you put the compressor and the limiter on. Don't be afraid to make certain adjustments to the mixer levels to get the sound that you want, whether it's rising something up or bringing something down. Thank you for rocking with the kid. Bless up one love, all that good shit. Fuck with your boy. Fuck with your boy. We made it this deep in the video. I can cuss. Fuck with your boy. All right, so quick update. I had to mix it in speakers to get the best mix, to get the mix that I knew would be good for this track. Um, this track is going to be coming out soon. It's going to be called Rengoku. It's going to be on Spotify and all that stuff soon. So with all of that being said, I did some adjustments. You can see the levels and you can see what the sounds were and stuff like that. You know, if you look at the master channel, all the stuff is the same. I'm just going to go over this real quick and just show you some of the stuff that changed as far as certain levels and stuff like that. So you can see what it is. You can look at all the levels and stuff and see how the mix has changed from what I did on camera. So the other two things right here, the ozone exciter and the imager, you know, we'll save that for another day. If you want to see a tutorial about that, you know, leave it in the comments. Let me know if you want some more master channel sauce, I'll give it to you. But I'm going to play a snippet of the beat so you can hear the full mix sounds a lot better because, again, had to mix it through speakers to get the full effect. But I appreciate you if you made it this far. Other than that, I'll see you all another day. Somehow, some way, I'm out.